Hey guys, Mark here. Today is a bit of an unusual day. I am in the Sheep River Valley once more. I have actually gotten to the point where I may actually finish this valley this summer, which completely blows my mind. That would be nuts. Um, but anyway, back to today. I At one point I had done all the Sandy McNabb um, ski trails, right? I came out here and I didn't think any of them were super interesting. So I didn't like actually put up videos about them, but I just thought, okay, well, I'll, you know, I'll take all the footage and I'll set it off to the side and maybe one day I'll make like a guide or something. Well, you know, the old, uh, Macintosh thing, um, that photos app and those computers, ugh, they're awful. Anyway, I took the albums right from the Photos app and put them into my exterior drive. Now, for some reason, you do that, it takes forever, it shows like percentage and everything, it looks like it's copying everything. And then you go look at the files and they say zero, zero bytes. They don't go. They go, but nothing goes, right? So, um, I lost all that footage. I mean, the only way, the only way you can actually copy things over is to go photos, put them into out of photos onto your desktop or whatever, and then copy them over. I, anyway, tech speak. So I lost all the Sandy McNabb ski trails footage. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, I've decided, you know, it took me four days to get them all, to get all these trails. I've decided I'm just going to have kind of a, a bit of a longer day and I'm just going to cover the stuff that's in the book. Because honestly, it's all that's interesting. A lot of the rest of it is exactly, it's cross-country ski trails. And it's in forest. Um, they're not real interesting, right? So, yeah. So right now, I'm down in the campground. Um, down there is the Sheep River. And I'm just going to catch quickly this uh, Santa McNabb interpretive trail. So that is in this, uh, the purple one. It is number two in the book. And really, I could show you the map in the back, but really this is all there is. So this is a quick one. And then I'll go drive over to Santa McNabb and uh, figure the route to rest from there. I think this is left over from the 80s. It's funny how, uh, I mean, the parks in general, national parks, provincial parks, they've fallen a little ways, right? Okay, here we go. Uh, I guess I can't even see this. This isn't even on here. <laughs> yeah, once upon a time I had footage of all this, whole thing. Now it is going to have like leftovers from, I did a hike up this way and I did a hike up this way. So I have kind of leftovers from that. Ah, whatever, we'll cover all the interesting stuff today. Figure it out. Okay. All right, been walking along nicely. And then you come to a little Y in the road and follow the arrows. This part up here is just kind of through the woods, a nice little stroll, right? And then it will turn right and head down to the river. This actually gets a touch confusing. So this seems very straightforward, but then you got a green arrow down there. And then you look up here, you got a green arrow up here too. So I think you're just crossing the trail. The green arrows are pointing out cross country ski trails. Anyway, I mean, I came walking through all this, but I don't remember little details like that, right? All right, almost done the open forest portion. Looks like I got an old bench up here. The old interpretive trail part of this has been basically dropped. I mean, there's all these posts with numbers, but I have no idea where you would get any literature to explain what those are supposed to be. All 
Not bad from here though. Not bad at all. Oh, how familiar that is. That's, San, that's uh, Mount Sandy McNabb, I believe it is. Mount McNabb. Went and did that earlier this year. Very cool. And over here, if you keep going, like there's kind of a rise, that's the Sandy McNabb Hills. That stuff is uh, pretty decent, you know, that's some pretty decent hiking. All right, let's head on down. I must be remembering this wrong because I thought this went down to the river, but it doesn't. Strange. All right, I guess I'm done. <laughs> now I just got to walk on back. I remember I stumbled into this the first time I was walking around on all these Sandy McNabb trails and couldn't figure out what the heck it was. It's in the book, but on the Sandy McNabb trails uh, maps, it's not even there. It's just vanished. <laughs> it just, for some reason, they just leave it off there. So you walk along, you find this trail and there's numbers along it and you're just kind of like, what the hell? But that's the way it is. Well, that was quick. I think that, you know, there's another little cross country ski trail that goes down or snowshoe trail. And that's the one that goes down to the river. And I remember there's even like a little old, like picnic area down there, which is now, you know, got pretty much half washed away in 2013. You look at the sign over here and it says hour and a half. And I just checked the timestamp on my, you know, on my video and it's half hour. So whatever, hour and a half with a four-year-old child. There's really nothing else to see on this side. Like if you took that one cross-country ski down, trail down to the river, okay. And if you walk to the west of here, one of the trails is along the top of the riverbank. So that's not bad. But the rest of it is, as I said, cross-country ski trails. If you do them in the winter, just, you know, be nice, uh, proper etiquette etiquette they will actually run machines over those trails to make nice cross-country ski tracks don't trample them seriously people have actually gotten into fist bites over this sort of thing right so just you know respect the cross-country skiers you know they don't have many places to go just don't tra trample those tracks just uh you know there's lots of places for us to go if you do go on those trails you can go all the way over on the right or whatever and just as out of the way as possible Okay, time for a little drive. All right, a quick little drive. I'm over at the Sheep River Ranger Station. This is where the majority of my day is going to be based out of. All right, here we go. Here's the real meat and potatoes of the day. I'm in the purple one again. So, Trying to get in close enough to focus on this. This is where I was before. I just did this number two quickly. Now I'm at the sheep office. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go up 12A. I'm gonna cut over. I'm gonna come up Pine Ridge Loop and then back down. And then I think, yeah, back down here. And then on to back to the office here. And then I think I won't even bother to stop. I'll just keep going up uh, number 11 here. And then cut down and come back down like that. And I think that's largely going to be my day. Hopefully you even saw all that, but yeah. So yeah, most of this I've already got. You know, some of this I have. This here I'm not going to bother with because I took that in while I was going up and I did this guy here, right? That was uh, almost two years ago now. Okay, let's roll. Alrighty. There I am. First thing, go up to here, here, and then I'm actually gonna cut up the middle of Maccabee Ridge. All 
right. I'm gonna head up here. There's some deep snow still around, but mostly the issue is gonna be ice and mud. You can see up here, there's nothing, right? Like almost no snow at all. I forgot that this trail has a little bit of climbing in this connector trail. I think then it goes down and then I climb again. So, yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't come out here to have a nice rest. I guess I never talked about safety today. You know, your gear, I have all my normal gear on me pretty much. I have a little bit of food. I have my, as always, I have my uh, Garmin in reach, that sort of thing. Part of the reason I'm doing this today is because just two days ago is when I did my last hike. And before that, it had been like five weeks. So, you know, that settled into my back, even though I didn't think it was that hard a hike. I still feel it two days later. I still feel it in my legs, my back. Yeah, all the body, my body takes a little while to, you know, almost 46 years old now. Body takes a while to shake off a hike. Know the trail? Well, I've done absolutely every centimeter of today's hike. That's, this never happens, right? But it's the way it is. No crossings, no nothing. Yeah, there you go. A little bit of safety for you. Well, it's just a little stream, but... When you have winter, it'll just overrun and make a massive thing of ice. So, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm here going up Maccabee. This is that trail. And this connector is over here. I'm gonna go up, you know, Jill documents this trail going up here, Mackamie Ridge. And I tend to agree with her. I'm not gonna bother putting that on camera. There's not much to it. That means I got to climb up this guy. All right. So far so good. On the very top, like when it gets into the trees, because I know it will, that's, I'm a little worried about snow there, but obviously this part is fine. Phew, this is going to be my toughest climb of the day, I think. Oh. Windy. Beautiful. All right, time to get up here out of the wind time for a nice break. Ah. Nice. It's a generally uh, the wind. It's generally kind of a clear day. Doesn't make for good shooting though with the wind. Alright, I'm hiding a little bit now. Maccabee Ridge has the nicest views in the Sandy McNabb Rec area. Uh, and it's not even on the maps. <laughs> there's a trail on one side, there's a trail on the other side. And it's quite easy up here, right? Last time I went beating my way up from there, I didn't really know how to get up here. So this time I'm going here. I'm gonna go straight as far as I can and see what I can find for trails to see if I can't go right off the end instead of cutting down which would be the same way that I came up the first time right anyway it's quite nice walking a little bit too much wind for me but hey you know look at this view pretty sweet huh. I just checked maps me and this trail is actually on there I don't quite know where I came beating my way up right I thought maybe I put a waypoint but I didn't you can see the farther north I walk, the more snow is starting to show up. And even Jill is like, oh, well, it's a little fishy getting off here. <laughs> All right, so this could be interesting. This will be my hardest trail of the day, my long shots. So we'll see what happens.
We had a major storm here in the fall. Look at that, isn't that just kind of creepy? It looks like a grave. And I bet this is what it came from. Like there was 100 kilometer an hour winds. And like, look at this. Wow, is this like an old hornet's nest? Cool, there's like comb in there. What a massive tree, man, and sheesh. Craziness. Well, it is really quite, quite pleasant up here. There's a very nice, obvious trail. The snow has gone away for the moment, you know, cross my fingers as I start to descend now, what happens. But uh, yeah, this is, this is fine, you know, this, this is an obvious trail. There's plenty of wind of uh, cover from the wind, the breeze. Yeah, I'm just having a pleasant time. All right, I just checked the app. I'm 90 meters away from is uh, existing, you know, official trail. Still going down this, some little thing here. You can see the snow down there. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna have to cross something. I mean, according to the guide, I'm gonna have to cross something. So we'll see what happens here, all right? I said I had been down every centimeter that I was gonna hike today, but a bit of a lie in this case, because like I said, I went around over there and I bashed my way up, which was actually pretty difficult in the middle of winter when I did it the first time. I just got to figure out how to get across this bad boy. All right, that wasn't so bad. Ran into four folks. All right, got off Maccabee Ridge, down to the trail, then ran into a few folks. And now I'm gonna climb up to Pine Ridge and uh, see the lookout up there and then come down the other side of the loop. Ah, it's a nice little lookout. Bit of a climb through the forest, but I like the lookout. <laughs> you never know, man. The trail that's just kind of wide, it will pick up a lot of snow sometimes, so. Still pretty easy though, I can just walk on top. I mean, these are existing trails now in the Sandy McNabb Breck area, so they probably ran, they probably run this canoe over this just to pack it down or machine to make uh, cross country ski tracks, one of the two. What are you doing, buddy? Yes? Yes? Can I help you? No, like me. No, you don't. I've just been sitting here having a break. And these, not one, but two squirrels have been buzzing all around me. And this one here was just clearly <laughs> sending me a message. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a squirrel be, be like almost like aggressive like that, right? Usually when they come up close to you like that, they want food. <laughs> that one was, yeah. And I mean, that's just what I caught on camera. There was a bunch more like that. You just don't know what'll happen out here in the woods. The little things you wonder about. Why would you put the boundary here instead of literally 10 meters down here <laughs> at the edge of this? Yeah, I mean, we're the ones who made the lines, right? Uh, here comes a little picnic table 
and a view to the north. Ha ha. I can't believe this is my third time here. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, walk down here. Actually, I'll sit down first. I walk down to the other one now. Hitching rail. I have a sign here that says horses not allowed on groomed ski trails, but I think as long as they're not groomed, then they're fine because I saw horse tracks and some scat. This trail down here, I've been down. When you go up that one down there like this, and come down to intercept uh, Death Valley. I had fun on that one actually. And then I went down there again, just a few months ago, but I went up the Death Valley Trail. Okay, I've had a nice little walk. Nice little walk. I've had a nice little break. Time to head back down this bad boy. All right. Well, I might have uh, taken a day off mentally as far as having to find trails, but I am going to throw on a lot of kilometers, got to say. Go down here, down here, and then I'm planning to go here and then do all this, which is like not even half the climbing, and then back along there. So I've finished most of the climbing for the day. I just have a lot of kilometers left to cover. Okay, I'm glad to be done that. It's kind of a muddy, icy, wet trail. So in front of me is Prairie Ridge. So I'm gonna turn left up here at the sign, go over there, walk around, and then hike up this thing, and then go back on the other side. One thing I have to comment on is I have to call myself out a little bit, right? This is not the time of year that people should be out here. Like you can see, it's so muddy. And then you can see that someone came down here with a horse and the damage to the trails. And then of course, I don't want to walk in the mud. So I'm up here. So then you end up with all these little side trails going on. So, I mean, this is not really the time to be out here, right? So I'm setting a crappy example with this. Uh, just keep that in mind, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't always, uh, I don't always do what's, uh, perfectly great for nature or for whatever, you know, safety and such. All right, I can almost, can almost throw a rock real hard and hit the car, hit the ranger station, but I got more plans today. Well, let's go. Well, I have commenced the climb up Long Prairie Ridge. Long Prairie Ridge is not as high as Maccabee Ridge. Obviously, Long Prairie Ridge has an actual trail to work with. But not just that, you can hear the cars on the road from here. You can hear when they go over like the, the, uh, the guards, you know, the berm. So yeah, the Texas Gate, there we go. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, finally a little reprieve into the trees. I think I break out over here though and get a nice view if I remember correctly. Nice. Nice. Well, can 
I'm walking up here. There's a nice little overlook and a nice little rest. There's a bit of a signs of a fire back there that someone made and a little lean-to. Yeah. It's a nice little walk, this ridge. It's more it's more open than uh, Maccabee, even though Maccabee's taller and such, right? Higher. Well, that last little look out there is like five minutes, and then here you are. You're, it's like, the last lookouts, the, the best ones are like over here someplace. All right, down here and hop back along the bottom. Cool, cool. Well, this is one thing I remember about this. It is just nice down here. It's open forest. You can see on both sides quite a ways. Here's a, here's a little spring of some kind. And uh, it's just pleasant. It's enough to keep the wind down. So it's just kind of nice and warm and yeah. Hey, how's it going? I should be yelling a bit more, obviously. I haven't been too worried about it. I mean, as far as I know, there's no grizzly or cougar around here, but you never know. Hmm? So cute when they just give you that deer in the headlights look. Okay, I don't know what that was, 20 kilometers or something, but I was sure feeling it. I'm sure feeling it now, that's for sure. Today was a detail. I mean, it's great to get onto nature, but I mean, you know me, I'm pretty much always going and blazing something new, right? I want to put everything from the Kananaskis Trail Guides on YouTube. That's a very, very lengthy task. Maybe I'll accomplish it, maybe I won't, but I want to finish this valley too, right? So, I mean, at some point I will leave South Calgary and then getting to Sheep Valley in particular is a major pain. So, really South Calgary is one of the only places you can get to it from. Um, Yeah, so I mean, I'm going to hit this valley up again this summer. I wanted to just take care of this little detail, and I did, and I enjoyed... A nice day in late March, right? Nothing wrong with that. Get out there and hike.